I watched this, and I told you I was going to watch it, and you told me to keep an open mind, and I did. And I have a page and a half of notes. Would you like to hear some? I'm rather curious. Yes, I would. Uh, <clears throat> Here we go. This is the first episode that anybody has ever seen from this promotion. And suddenly a weird video popped up. I wrote weird video with words on screen. I thought it was going to be something. And then suddenly somebody does a max headroom and hijacks the fucking broadcast and is going to give out a message that we're going to, oh my God, it's like, you know, the day the earth stood still, we're coming, whatever the fuck. And it was incomprehensible. I don't know what the fuck they were talking about, what was going on. And it was never referred to. I have no idea what that video was. I have no idea what it was teasing. And there's just so much shit on this show that I'm guessing maybe it's explained somewhere else. I don't know because I don't watch that stuff. But there's too much stuff that's not explained, that doesn't make sense. And then you just wonder about it. And nothing's ever said to you. Well, here's the thing. It's not a tease if you don't understand that you're being teased. If you're just like, I don't even understand the words that are on the screen or what does this, how does this apply to anything? It's not a tease. There has to be some connection to something you're interested in. So you're being teased to what's going to come. Anyway, the first couple of seconds we get on this boat, as soon as it takes off, the seas are rough, the winds are high, and they've told us, that, well, it's going to be rough for the first day. You know, I'm seeing the, cra the actual Cracker Barrel. Sponsoring the, pr the program, they have a Cracker Barrel floating out in the ocean. And, uh, you know, the cruise ships cruising down the Ohio River. Um, and that's not bad, because I'm thinking it's a giant, it's like a shopping mall floating down the fucking, through, not down the river, but floating out in the ocean. You know, I'm seeing all these, uh, you know, the, the, the people are just dancing and playing musical instruments and and there's a guy cutting a diamond just things that you can do it require great motor skills and coordination i'm thinking this is going to be like just sitting in your house right god damn it the first 10 15 seconds we get on this boat as soon as it takes off here come the hearts not the heart family but the heart suit they surround the ship the hallways, I don't know, what do they call them on a ship? Not breezeway, the hallways of the thing. The hallway, yeah. And people are bouncing back and forth off the walls like a video game. Bang, bang, bang. And it looked like a goddamn scene from Gilligan's Island. And then a 98-pound pale girl in fucking frilly ballet skirts and lace doilies on her wrists being the veteran and knowing that this thing is doomed, immediately turns around and leaves and walks backstage. So she wasn't out there to get all this shit on her. And they get horrible fucking heat on the baby faces. They, 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 they don't know how to get heat. And I'm not talking about the emotion heat. I'm talking about they do not know how to perform getting violent physical heat on the baby faces in a fucking angle. To have the fucking sound and the motion, the fucking kicking the shit out of a guy in one corner while you're holding the other guy in the other corner up and you're mugging him with shots and they're ringing the bell and there's people getting up on the apron. I used to send people from the fucking concession stand if I didn't have enough. I'd send some guy up with a fucking Ring of Honor t-shirt just to get punched and go down to the floor just because it adds to the chaos. You've got to create these scenes. They don't just happen. This was fucking rotten. Now, here's the problem. The problem is pus-filled pocket pussy, the glob of preserve that falls off the biscuit and lands on your carpet. It's all mixed up with the dog hairs. From the time he comes down the ramp, he looks like shit. This little goof. It, it, from the time you see him, it's just, uh, come on. Then, as we used to say down south, boy, that right there is a blue ribbon prize winning pig. Holy fuck. That was the ugliest fucking thing I have ever seen in my... And do you see the people looking at this fucking fat, dumpy, middle-aged Margaret Cho-looking fucking outlaw coming to the ship dressed like Stevie Nicks with a gimmick baseball bat? However, 
it was a comically like a, it wasn't a real baseball bat. It was a comically large baseball bat, like you would find at a Goonie golf place or something. It looked like it was a fucking spike baseball bat that looks like a pin cushion and a porcupine had a baby. And it was half as big as Stevie Nicks was, so people didn't even really get to fucking joke, I don't think. I'd, I'd, it, okay, and now something happened that all the one piece fans went just berserk insane for, that they were making statements and the people in the company make it, this is going to change the face of anime again. Remember when that was going to happen? Oh, uh, the last time. Here comes Stevie Nicks job guys. They come out to the stage and fat door. We're going to call him fat dork. And, and the other one will be now beard dork. <laughs> so fat dork does a stagey rehearsed promo in a fake evil voice. And then the hearts swarm both Cody and the barrel. Cause we didn't really know who the fucking baby faces were anyway. And then fat dork walks up to a giant, the cracker barrel and turns the thing and the barrel pops open disproving my theory once and for all everybody that comes out of a cracker barrel is not over and out comes some small human being that apparently looked to be about 5'8", 5'9", 175 pounds and guess who it is everybody it's monkey D. Boofy I wish I had crickets on this machine. Reedy, 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 reedy. How about this? <coughs> like anybody in the United States of America, besides the people already watching that program, would know who the fuck Monkey is. It was a big deal. Oh my God, look at it. You think a lot of them know or give a fuck who little bitty teeny weeny itsy titsy monkey is? It's like they fucking unmasked Long John Silver. Oh, look out, my God! No, that would make a difference in your business. The point is, people reacted to this. The fans reacted to this like, oh, my God, like they just brought out Roddy fucking Piper. They can't admit to themselves that almost nobody in the overall scheme of things knows who the fuck their favorite wrestlers are or wants to watch this horse shit. They just can't admit it. And he stood there and I, I wrote at the time, I'm giving this one more minute. And he stood there motionless for about 50 seconds and then dove off the box and jump started whatever the fuck. Speaking of fashion, what did you think of him wearing a straw hat? Um, monkey looked like Huckleberry Finn if he'd fucking forgotten <laughs> his own name. <laughs> um, it's, but so she, yeah, he's wearing a straw hat. Uh, Huckleberry Finn didn't sell anything. Barely anything happened. Just no, this is the stupidest shit I've ever seen in my life. No, fuck all of this. Just all of this. Just everything that happened here. It was all rotten, and we don't ever want to think about it ever again. Uh, anyway, Cody does the promo, and basically, uh, and he talks for quite a while. He finally gets to a point, but it took him a significant amount of time to get there. But he makes the point that he apparently, sometime back, I forget, was it six months, eight months, nine months, however long it's been, we the camera widens up and he was laying, sitting, perched. I don't know what the fuck you call that position. He's in the boat. And we are expected to believe that they have kidnapped a midget mascot, a little dwarf dong sucker. And we're expected not only to believe that they've done these things, but that the other guys are going to be mad about it because this is such fucking heat. So now this is just as bad and hokey and silly and phony as anything in Dragon the Ball. But it's being done with, you can't even use the word talent. It's not like they kidnapped somebody that anybody has a, it, it, listen to me say that, like that would be believable. 
It's not like they kidnapped somebody that people like. They've kidnapped a fucking annoying little fucking genetic mutant. And they haven't really kidnapped him because nobody believes it. They've beaten him to death. They booked him rotten from the start. And you know that the half a dozen people across the country that actually wandered into this thing thinking they were going to see a wrestling program and are sitting there dumbfounded are going, who the fuck is that kid? And he's got purple hair. Think they're telling the story. He doesn't want to be known as a hardcore guy. He wants to be known as a Marine. Well, you know, get a goddamn job at Walmart and be known as a fucking you know, baggage cart collector. Cause that's what appearance wise you're suited for young man. Um, uh, once again, I am not, I'm not knocking this guy. He's got more guts than I do. All respect to him. This is the first thing I see from a new anime from, and the announcer is talking about how great this is that everybody gets a chance. If, if this guy's lifelong dream was to play in the NFL, would they put him in a fucking game? If it if his if he was the biggest basketball fan in the world, would the NBA let him go out there and pass the ball in a game? If 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 it's not right there, then it's not right here for the business and for this guy. And this guy, now that I've seen him for more than a couple of second clip, can't be five feet tall and can't be a hundred pounds. It's fucking embarrassing. Well, first of all, to the Cody segment, Cody being kidnapped, this is why Neon has security. Monkey D, Goofy, promo, the, the, the bone of contention, the point there, it wouldn't have been bad if it wasn't for the unnatural acting and the affectations and the laughing and the, the Joker character thing. He just has They've to got- yell out, I'm on dust, and it'll all make sense. <laughs> Uh, and also during the backstage promo, I don't know who or what Goofy was looking at. He wasn't looking at the interviewer that was speaking to him. He wasn't looking at the camera. He wasn't looking at his partner. He was just staring off while he was addressing all those people. But it looked like his straw hat, he felt was radioactive. He would look at it, hold it up in the air, <laughs> and then bring it back up like, oh, it's glowing. Um, 